In this video series about loops, we will understand how loops work and check out the different forms of loops. There are two kinds of loops in Python. One is a while loop and the other is the for loop. Join me in this new Python series because it's happening right now. Now, one of the reasons why we program a computer is to automate tasks that are repetitive, which are otherwise taxing for humans to perform. For example, asking the user to answer a question or a prompt with a yes or no. When the user types something else, the program will continue to ask for the right answer. Now, this will require the computer to repeat such tasks until the correct input is given or the correct answer is given by the user. In programming... <laughs> Sorry, can, can, can you repeat that? Well, this is a classic example of a loop. I will keep explaining what the thing is, such as loops, until this guy understands it. Sorry, I'm a little bit slow. Please. In computer programming, repeating tasks is called a loop, or we call it sometimes iteration. We will learn in this series five different forms of loops. I will be making a video on each of the forms in details. But for now, let's see some sample codes for each of the forms. First form is called infinite loop. As its name implies, an infinite loop executes codes infinitely until it is interrupted. The while loop takes the form as shown in the following code which prints random numbers between and including 1 and 100. Running the code shows the continuous printing of the random numbers. This loop is terminated only when you stop or press control break. The next form is called counter control loop. A counter control loop is obviously dependent on a counter which is manipulated inside the loop. For example, if the counter reaches 100, the loop ends. This loop is best used when you know how many times you have to repeat execution of codes. Counter control loops are more efficiently applied to a for loop, but we can still use it in a while loop. So let's see the code. As you can see, the loop prints the numbers from 1 to 100 and then stops. The next form of loop is called sentinel control. A sentinel control loop is determined by a specific value in a condition. Usually when a value exists in a condition, the loop ends. As an example, if a user types 9, this value will be used to terminate the loop. This is very useful when you don't know when the loop stops until a certain value comes up. Now let's see the code. This loop repeatedly asks to type a number and only stops asking when 9 is entered. The fourth form of a loop is called flag control. A flag control loop takes a Boolean variable as part of the condition. Somewhere inside the loop, the value of the Boolean variable is set. When the value of the variable is set to true, the loop continues. When the value becomes false, then the loop stops. So let's take a look at the code. This loop continues to ask for an email address and compares it against a predefined email address. If both values are equal, then the variable valid is set to true. Terminates the loop and prints a message. If the two values are not equal, the variable valid is set to false and prints some sort of an error message. Then the loop resumes to ask for a valid email address. The last form of a loop is called an EOF control. 
the EOF control or end of file control loop is mostly used when reading a file. As soon as the end of file is reached, the loop terminates. End of file detection in Python is embedded in Python functions. We will cover these functions when we reach to the topic of file processing.